See, back when I was a chunky little girl, and all the other kids used to put me down, my mother would pull me close, turn on the record player, and play some hits of James Brown, and I would feel so good. So I admit it, I became a soul junkie. But I still don't have a perfect answer to when an imperfect stranger asks me, so how did you get all that soul in your voice? I've been asked this question enough times to feel as if my soul were put in the wrong mold. I began to wonder, is soul color coordinated in heaven? Is it genetic or environmental? Could it be stolen, learned, or borrowed like rock and roll? And if you could purchase soul, Mother Teresa, Dr. King, and Gandhi must have shopped at the Goodwill. Well, most of us unknowingly inherit these overproduced, mass-marketed, sweatshop factory, three for a dollar, kind of colonized type souls, but I've lived long enough to know that soul cannot be injected like collagen. It cannot be implanted like Nicki Minaj, nor can it be tattooed across your skin. But I wonder, can soul be bored to death in lecture halls? Could it be inhaled while listening to Snoop Dogg's chronic album? But I think back in my life to times that mattered, I can still hear my Oma speaking in her immigrant English. How she professed the survival of socialism, communism, red burn revolutions, cookies with no sugar. Here in democracy, she hand-fed her spirit of survival to me, and she taught me that soul, it's cooking without any recipes. It's the dirt trapped under your fingernails. It's the whiskey belly dancing lullabies in your glass. It's the calluses binding together America's backbone, ground into your grandparents' hands. It's your chunky belly. It's stretch marks that dance life across your body. When you're so ugly, you're just humanly beautiful. It's knowing that sometimes gardens can grow from mounds of regret, like life let in through the universe's birth through the once labeled at risk. You've now accepted to Marquette and Harvard like humanity pushing us farther. It's like the resilience that must have been stitched in Jackie Robinson's spine. It must be my mother finding the lightning to divorce my daddy's thunderbolt fists. It's playing the air guitar, as if the music moving through your fingers is the spirit of your firstborn. And she was taken to heaven so soon, but she has got to be rocking out with us in heaven. I've come to know that soul is all you have when your life is peeled naked, like a flower under bitter winter, pollinating greatness. Your life is a purpose, and you are pollinating greatness. So I don't know how to explain to people who hear soul in my voice. To trace the source, you would have to back flip back over five continents and unstitch the sun. Find the elemental force that makes us all human despite these different rhythms that we walk to, but I wish. I wish that soul could be like bridges and connect us, like we could really taste one another's spirit, and we could transcend the income brackets, racisms, religions that divide us, like we could really be one love, Bob Marley, like we could really be one love, like we really could share all the world. Like maybe we could call our soldiers home and civilians, they could have soul instead of bombs for breakfast. We could all come to bonk on a Saturday night and just feel so good. Hey, thank you all for listening. Woo! I get nervous when people are quiet. Either they're listening or they're not listening, right? And I'm used to teaching middle school, so they're never quiet. So I don't know how to handle that. So thank you for those who are listening. And um, So Oma. Oma is from the German language. Anybody know what Oma is? Grandma. Grandma, any Omas in here tonight? A couple Omas? Oh, okay. He's the Oma? Are you? You have a soul of the Oma? So we brought up the haiku competition. There is a slam. In the haiku competition, you have to, each round, it's like the best out of nine. So I think that's what, whoever wins the first five. So you say haiku, they say haiku, 
three judges decide red or white. And then red is the winner. You always have to read first if you win. So here are a few haikus that I actually read at the championship. It's available online called Red Reads First. It's an anthology of, of the haiku winners from the national competitions. And the haiku um, is loose because the American haiku is Jack Kerouac kind of reinvented it. It's a loose amount of syllables that kind of just have a main point. So here are some. I would have picked the splinters from your back, but I was too busy carrying your cross. <laughs> that was to my ex, 101. <laughs> Each morning, he probably turns in his homework as if it is graded in dreams. If only the good die young, that librarian is going to live forever. <laughs> Not to any librarians in here. Hopefully you're a nice librarian. My cabbage patch feet will never fit in Cinderella's glass slipper. You are the donuts to my Homer Simpson, baby. <laughs> Each groove in his lips is a city I could spend lifetimes lost inside. In recession, Cutting coupons is the greatest foreplay. <laughs> so thanks for going on this journey with me. So we'll do another slam poem. Slam, slam really just um, say your poem to the best of your abilities when you perform. Hmm. The 1990s burnt bright with the red glow of an omniscient Nintendo light. See, back there, we were able to remember our poems back then. <laughs> <laughs> See, back then, we were pimple teenagers. We weren't scared of any spike turtle. Not even the bouncing Koopa dragon at the end of the eleven could frighten off pimple teenagers. I mean, we were G.I. Joe generation hardcore. We had secret tunnels, individually wrapped pudding snacks, <laughs> Bill Cosby on Monday nights. When we wanted answers, we popped Coke cans like hip-hop videos pop champagne, not knowing the secret to life had long ago been cut from our umbilical cord. See, it's the beauty that makes life scary. Sooner or later, you have to learn to say goodbye. And just last summer, I ran into my same Nintendo battling cousin, and I hugged her tight at the family reunion, only to realize less friction on one side. She only had one breast, one happy to be there, Fight like a girl, hold your pink ribbons tighter. She wore no fake bra, she wore her shirt tight and proud. She had survived fighting one round of the scariest dragon I have never had to face. And months later, her hair thinned like white dandelions bowing to summer's end. She held my hand for a prayer tight as if it would make God more likely to comply. Her nails were still four inches, painted butterflies, hopefully dancing to the beep of the machine somewhere in cancer wards. Kids who may not live to see summer have been stardust inhaled, unable to be wished upon, humming the ugliest, palest octave ever heard somewhere. Organs have become abandoned buildings. Somewhere, a mother and father 
shave their head to match the effects of chemo in their daughter. They walk through a mall together like this is what is beautiful. It's the little girl's hair growing back just in time for her funeral. No redos on this board. And like a song elected to carry a life fading into a bubblegum sunset. I hear an orchestra of flowers and all they keep reciting is baby don't go. And like purple shutters on a pea green house, I am ashamed. I have not been more thankful and giving. I have no armor to protect you from this monster at your heels, but still your strength, it glows. I'm nested like they're red on the Nintendo like used to, and though my dear cousin, you are losing this battle. I vow, I will tell all of your five children how in your memory, their mother, she had so many extra lives. When my producer added the music to that track, I said, the music at the end is too happy. I was like, it's sad, she died. He's like, to me, it's triumphant. It's powerful, it's beautiful, because what can you do except for live a good life when you have it? And that's what she did. And um, I often take that for granted, how much lucky I am to be, how lucky I am to made, have made it this far. So I'm glad that he could add that joy and light into the background of it. James Murphy actually produced all of the music. I was lucky I got to do my whole album, I recorded it, and then he put music over it, instead of like having to work with a track. I could never be a rapper, too much math. Oh <laughs> I just want to talk. Take care of the rest. That's, That's the best reason not to be around. Yeah. <laughs> Too much rap. Too much rap. Too much rap. So some people think I'm crazy. Just because I sing love songs to my dog. <laughs> like, I don't sing Sade's, he's a smooth operator. No. I sing, he's a smooth coach Jack Russell. <laughs> and just because he has a rockerwear fit for every season, a Gucci spring jacket, and a pimped out brewer's hat, doesn't mean my dog is spoiled. I mean, he was dressed as Batman on Halloween. He wore a tuxedo on New Year's. And for Christmas, I took pictures of him on Santa's lap and gave them his presents. But before you judge me, please understand, my dog is 12 pounds of pure joy. A spontaneous love missile launching in my arms, exploding in saliva dreams. He twirls his blessings in front of me. He is a carousel packed with smiles. He wags his tail like a windshield wiper on full blast. And the best part, the absolute best part, he fits perfectly in my lap. Like the daughter I never had. I got tired of awkward questions at baby showers and weddings when my aunt too had too much wine and kept asking the same questions. But my dog, he looks at me like I'm perfect. Like there is no mistake. Like this is how it's meant to be. I mean, I have more time for my friends, my students, my mentees. So no, maybe you won't see any cute little chubby finger paintings of butterflies on my refrigerator door. You will see a framed picture of my dog that says my dog is cuter than your dog. <laughs> Which, of course, matches my dog's t-shirt that says, my owner is cuter than your owner. <laughs> and you might hear me rapping an old school classic. I'll do this rap, but that's the only math I can do. See, oh, no dog, he can run quite like he can. He'll take a muscle bomb box or leave a space in the stand. He's not a pit bull, a jack that won't stop. He have his say, hey, Jackson, do you want to take a walk? And if you think you could outrun him, oh boy, I bet. I ain't even see a greyhound that could do that yet. A face licker, though his breath's not good. He's got a gold doggy tag that says, I wish you would. <laughs> see, the cornier, the better. The more I laugh, he smiles his little doggy smile. And all the while, he's teaching me to live in the moment. Because to him, everything is wonderful. So no more chewing on broken glass shame. My dog taught me to put my face in the wind. Let my tongue hang. Let the pain roll off like drool. Cause through it all, he's taught me to live 
in the moment. They say that dog is man's best friend, but I guess my little Jackson, he's my family. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Are we good for a couple more? No. I'm distracted by that baby with the gun behind you. The baby. <laughs> you feel protected? And maybe if I sat closer to you, I would feel. Because I feel like I'm on the opposite side of the baby with the gun. So I was blessed um, with my son at 32. So I do have an amazing son. I wasn't going to do this poem, but. Something moved me to maybe need to do this, um, this piece here. Healing Broken is the name of the CD. I don't know what age it was when I realized how broken things were. And I don't know why I thought I could fix them. And I spent a lot of my life trying to fix everyone else and didn't realize I had to fix myself and that was my only responsibility. And I'm still learning that. See, he was a city built up, only to be burnt down. Like a civilization romanticized in hopes of conquer. He was a spider trapped and pulled apart leg by leg by leg. They never understood the genius of his webbings. But see, he integrated my household when I was six years old. I got his cassette tape for my birthday. I blasted it in my boombox. I shook my dance machine off the wall all night because listening to Michael Jackson made me feel like I would never die. And watching him moonwalk took me higher than the noon sunshine. And even my father, my not so open-minded German father, had to admit, this young man be big as Elvis. <laughs> I knew he'd be bigger. But I'm still not sure if I should be more mad at my cousin for stealing my Michael Jackson watch when I was seven, or if it's time to finally forgive her. I mean, it's only been like 20 some years. <laughs> and after I watched Stevie Wonder Monsoon, a tear of rainstorm tears on stage at Summerfest on a Sunday night, during a Michael Jackson song, his daughter Winsha wiped them away. He fought through and said, despite any negativity, love, love, is the only thing that will heal things. And I wish that could be my new mantra. I don't want to be like outsiders who read everyone else as a Sunday edition of the paper. We roll over each other with scrutinized eyes, only fold each other back in creases as if newspaper articles don't have souls. I want to remember everyone for the life that they get it, give us. Like how Michael planted seeds in untamed lots. He allowed us to blossom underneath the glistening of his glove. Because in every broken performer, we see a broken part of us, a human. So imperfectly perfect, used and abused by the ones that we love, beaten to believe that our natural beauty could never be enough. So like most of us, he changed what he could. He kept going, singing, growing, became an ocean connecting so many different shades of sand. Who could I be to judge a man that couldn't find his own anecdote in the world that he so desperately wanted to heal? I just know if I threw stones, I would break my own glass home. And I just know that every time I hear a song from Michael, there's still a piece of me that that chunky six-year-old girl shaking her dance machine off the wall all night because every time I hear Michael, I know there's a piece of him, like there's a piece of all of us that could never truly die. Thank you. When that song on the album has a beautiful melody, um, Michael Jackson-esque music behind it that James Murphy did. It is on iTunes. There's also download cards um, available, or you could buy the whole CD. But if you prefer just to get a download card, you could get that as well. And I think one more poem in closing. Is that good on time? I have no idea how long I've been up here. <laughs> Well, he's got the gun, so he right. Right. <laughs> okay. And 
And I do have, he mentioned bumper stickers. If you don't have a bumper, it's just a really big sticker. <laughs> I actually had somebody walk off with all of my uh, merch at this one show, so I'm like, this is the only dog one that I have. But I had to give it to someone. <laughs> Gotta watch your stuff. There's a lot you learn in this game when you, uh, when you start living it. But I do poetry for a living. I was an educator, and now I get to educate people with poetry because I find so many teenagers that are hurting and need a little healing, and poetry provides some, some type of release for them. So that, there's actually an anthology of teamwork too, if you know any younger readers that would um, want to relate to that. And one more story. Can we handle one more story? How's everybody else doing? <laughs> Thank you for everyone that um, put work into tonight and keeps poetry alive on nice and warm and hot on this cold night. And thank you. So my son is four years old. He thinks he is a sumo wrestling alligator ninja basketball superstar alien. <laughs> and I believe in him. <laughs> we play this game called Baby in Space. Baby in space. <laughs> but he's gotten so heavy he emergency land crashes into me. His dark almond cathedral forgiving eyes melt into me. His cheeks are so chubby, he pinches them himself. <laughs> Before his birth, I was prepared. My living room transformed into a baby section from Walmart. But I never imagined how I would fall in love so deep. It has changed my bone density. Nor was I ready for our first family outing for my soon-to-be sister-in-law to state in her snooky-like attitude, your son is so dark, people are gonna think he's adopted. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I just held my son closer. I looked at his butter pecan skin dark. I just thought he was glorious. Dark, as if she never sat across the dinner table for my son's father and all his mahogany brilliance. Dark, had she really never seen a picture of our president? What did she think Melanin would bless him with? <laughs> I never once asked her if she were adopted. I mean, she's what we will call white, but somehow she tanned herself orange. <laughs> Dark. I have enough trouble fighting through strangers at grocery stores as they cut into my happiness to ask, excuse me, what is it? It? Do you mean my son? And they say, I mean, is he mixed or something? And I say, yes, with love, faith, hope, and joy, just like anyone else's child. But they look at me like I'm dumb and say, what race is he? And I say, human. See, the only race I believe in. But I get it. We were all trained to separate circles from squares, to segregate the triangles, but we are far past preschool. I wish we could see how our world has become globally interconnected, find sacred our similarities, honor our differences, or at least when you see me out in public, ask me more important questions, like is he getting enough to eat? Are you feeding him organic food? Are you making sure he will be registered to vote, understand the power of language? Are you explaining to him what President Obama said at a memorial service, it's time, We've learned to be better neighbors. Are you telling him stories where dark omen eye boys are superheroes because he's gotta know that he too comes from greatness and he too has the possibility to change things, but I know there'll come a day when he will ask me, Mom, how come when we were at the lakefront, the policewoman on her bike smiled at you, looked at me confused, looked at my father and put her hand on her gun. I wonder how many questions I would want to run from. How many times will my silence betray me? How long can my arms still protect him from the world that I am scared to face on most days? But his happiness gives me strength and reminds me. That even in the darkest night, you will see the brightest star. And when he asks me, Mom, how come they tell me that I'm black, but you're my birth mother, and they call you white? I will explain to him, son, 
You are holier than any Sunday, just like anyone else's child. So you were born under President Obama. You are proof black and white love can exist. Dr. King Jr. did not die in vain. Son, you are dark. Because the stars, they could never shine without the navy blue sky. You are dark like our history, dark like your great-great-grandmother's tears when she was forced out of Ireland. Son, you are dark, because that tells you the chocolate chip cookies are ready to come out of the oven. And dark is only a matter of perspective sometimes, no matter who you are, no matter how hard you try. Some people will never taste your true brilliance, but you better be brilliant anyways sun and I will love you. No matter what skin shade, afro, mohawk, or hue, sun, I will hold you the way the sun is held by the sky as it rises. I will hold you the way Louis Armstrong held New Orleans in his vocal cords. When you lay your head on my chest, I knew we were wrapped in the breath of God. And I can't wait till tonight when I pick up my son and maybe we can play another round of baby in space. Because at least the play aliens, they can see that all humans, we kind of look alike. <laughs> <laughs> OneLovePoetics.com, that is the, my webpage if you're trying to find me. We do social justice workshops, a lot of circle work. I work with a lot of youth um, incarcerated in shelters, um, addicted to drugs and other things. And I found the healing of the arts. So for everyone that supports, thank you so much for um, helping the community heal through the arts. And um, I do have CDs. I just have two chapbooks left. Hey, that's a good feeling. Uh -huh. <laughs> just two left. Um, if anyone's interested. But thank you again for your time and welcome back your host for this stage. Mr. Mitchell. Oh, no. Oh, no.